Today I'm going to be showing you how I customize my KDE desktop on Kubuntu and truly make it my own. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to turn Kubuntu from this to this. But without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so now the first thing I do is right click, then go to add panel, application menu bar. This adds a global menu for all our applications. Now what I do is right click on the panel, then click edit panel. And as you can see, our global menu is right there. And then I go ahead and add some widgets to it. I add a digital clock right there and a system tray. Then I go ahead and add a spacer to arrange everything in the right order. And now what I do is get a doc called Latte Doc. You can install it with the command I'll have in the description. But anyway, I've already got that installed, so I click on it to open it up. And then there we go. We'll do more customization with this later in this video. But for now what I do is right click on this panel, click Edit Panel, and then I just delete this entire panel, because now I've got our doc. And now what I do is add widgets to this. I add an application dashboard right there, which is basically a full screen application launcher. And I also right click on the analog clock, then go to dock settings, then remove it. And while we're in dock settings, I disable all the delays, then set visibility to dodge all windows. Then I go to appearance, then I reduce the zoom on hover to 60%. Then I set the background size to 100% and then reduce the size to 48 pixels. Then I go to advanced settings, then I go to effects, and then I change the style for active windows to be just a dot. Then I close out of this. And now I go to our application dashboard, then go to our system settings, and then I go to global theme. And then I install a theme called Materia. If you search for Materia on the KDE store, it'll be entitled Materia Manjaro Dark. I just go ahead and install that. And then after installing it, I close out of this and apply the theme. And there we go. Now we'll polish up this theme as we go further into this video. But for now, I go to application style, then change the application style to oxygen, just to kind of get that Mac look and feel. And then after I've done that, what I actually want to do is go to configure gnome slash GDK application style. And then I get a new gnome slash GDK3 application style. Now there is no materia or rhythm dark theme for GNOME applications. So I use a theme called Juno, which which kind of blends in with the rest of the desktop. And I install Juno Ocean. And then once that's done, I close out of this and then set Juno Ocean for both GDK2 and GDK3 themes. And then this is how GNOME applications will look. Not a 100% match, but close enough. You can make GNOME applications blend in better with the rest of your desktop to a point by installing a package called GDK3 No CSD, which I already installed, the command for which I'll have in the description. Then I go to window decorations and then I scroll down and I use a window decoration called Sierra Breeze. You can install it with the commands I'll have in the description. But anyway, I've already installed it so I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. Then I go to the title bar buttons and then drag off everything except for close, minimize, and maximize. And then I arrange them in the order that I like. So on the left going close, minimize, maximize from the right left. And then I apply that and there we go. And now I go to colors and then get a color scheme called Aritim, and then I install the color scheme entitled Aritim Dark. And then once that's installed, I close out of this and apply the color scheme. And this is starting to look good. But anyway, now I go to icons and install an icon theme called Mojave, then install the one entitled Mojave CT Icons. Then I grab the one entitled Mojave CT Night Mode, and then once that's installed, I close out of this, and then apply the new icon theme. And then this will be applied to the rest of the system, but in order for it to get applied to applications that you currently have open, you have to close out of that application and get back into it. There we go. Now I go to Cursors, and then get a cursor called White Sur Cursors, and then once that's installed, I close out of this and apply the new cursor. There we go. All right, now what I do is go to workspace behavior, desktop effects, and then I change the minimize animation to magic lamp and enable wobbly windows, and then enable sheet for model dialogues to smoothly fly in and out when they are shown or hidden. Let me apply this. And then I change the window open close animation to scale and apply that. But anyway, now I go to screen edges and then disable this hot corner, then apply that. So that way it won't show a blue color on the top left of the screen when I mouse to it. Then I go to screen locking and then I set the system to automatically lock after one minute. And I allow unlocking without password for five seconds since there's no warning for automatic screen locking. 
and then I apply that. And then lastly, I go to Startup and Shutdown, and then I use the White Sur login screen. You can install it from the KDE store. It'll be entitled White Sur SDDM, but anyway, I've already got that installed and applied. Then what I do is change the background. You can find backgrounds on your drive under USR, Share, Wallpapers, and then here are all your wallpapers. And I use a wallpaper called Cold Ripple. It'll be under Contents, Images, and then I go for the 1920 by 1080 version. It's already applied, so I'm not gonna bother doing it right now. But anyway, now I go to shortcuts, and I'm gonna change a bit of keyboard shortcuts here, just to get them more to my liking. First I go to Spectacle, and then change Capture Active Window to Control Shift 2, then change Capture Entire Desktop to Control Shift 1, and then change Capture Rectangular Region to Control Shift 3. Then I disable everything else, and click apply. Then I go to KWIN, and then change the close window shortcut from Alt F4 to Control Q. Then it's gonna complain that the Control Q combination is already being used. We're gonna reassign it. And then I scroll down to walkthrough windows, and then change the shortcut to Meta Tab. Your Meta Key would be your Windows key on most computers. And then it's going to complain that Meta Tab is already assigned. We're going to reassign it. And then I do similar thing for Walkthrough Windows Reverse, except instead of Meta Tab, I do Meta Shift Tab. And then I reassign it. This basically configures it so that way you can walk through Windows just by pressing the Meta and Tab keys. And then the Meta Shift Tab does that in reverse. And then set the K Runner shortcut to Control Space. This is that way if you hit control space and I get this popping up so that way I can quickly launch an application. But anyway, I go and apply it and now I go to input devices, touchpad since I'm using a laptop and then I invert the scroll directions so that way it's natural which is what I'm used to. Then I go to display and monitor and then activate the night color for sunset to sunrise. All right now we're done in system settings. So now what I do is go down here and right click, then configure the application dashboard, and then I hide recent applications and recent documents, since just my personal preference, I actually don't like it. If you like it, by all means, keep it enabled. And then I change the shortcut for the application dashboard to meta space. Then I click OK. Now, just pressing the meta key won't work anymore. You have to assign it with some other key. But anyway, now if I click meta space, there we go. It'll show all my applications. And we can get out of this just by pressing the escape key. But anyway, now I go up to the top panel, right click on it, then go to add widgets, and then I get a widget called Active Window Control. But anyway, I install Active Window Control, and then after that's installed, I right click again on that panel, then click add widgets, and then I put Active Window Control right on the top left. Then I right click on that panel again, then click Edit Panel, and then I move the Active Window Control widget to the very left. And now I go Configure Active Window Control, and the fill width option, I can't get it to do what I want, so I change it manually. I'll do this later, once I know how much my title bar buttons are gonna take up. And then I hide the title bar for maximized windows, and then I change the text type to application name, then I change the no window text to desktop, then I don't show the window icon, and then apply that. Then I go to buttons, and I show the minimize and maximize buttons, and then arrange the buttons how I like them. Then I check buttons next to icon and text, and then sliding icon and text, and then I check vertical center to center the buttons. Apply that, there we go. They're a bit tiny, but we'll fix that. Now it's not possible to use the Sierra Breeze theme with active window control, so we're gonna need to go to system settings, application style, window decorations, and then install new window decoration. For active window control, I install a window decoration called Breeze Mitt and then install that. And then after I install that, I don't apply it. I right click on active window control, then click configure active window control, then go back to buttons. And now I go into my file manager, then I show hidden files, and then I go to dot local, share, Aurora themes, breeze mint dark. Then I click on the little top bar right here, then copy and paste the path, paste it here, then apply that, and there we go. Let's just tweak the button size and spacing a bit. I configure it like this. But anyway, I close out of this, close out of Dolphin, then I right click on this top bar, then click edit panel, then I add another spacer, then put it all the way to the left, even to the left of active window control, then I shrink that spacer down to right here. And after playing with the spacers a bit, there you go. Now I go back to the active window control configuration, then I change the width 
to just fit the buttons, just like that. Now let's actually go back into Dolphin and then configure Dolphin. Then I go to Trash and then I move the limit on the trash. And then I change the sorting mode to alphabetical, case insensitive. Then I close out of this. Then I go up here. Then I disable showing previews. Then I add the sections recent and search for since I don't like them. And then I add the folders music, pictures, videos. And then I delete the templates folder and then create a folder called free folder just to temporarily store files. And then I add it right here. Now we're done in here. So let's close out of this. Now I go up to the system tray, right click on it, then configure system tray. And then I change the night color control to disabled, vaults to disabled, printers to disabled, networks to always shown, keyboard indicator to disabled, Bluetooth to always shown, battery to always shown, and audio volume to always shown. Then I leave everything else as it is. Now I right click, then click configure your desktop, then I change the wallpaper to cold ripple. And there we go. And now what I do is edit the terminal profile. Since the terminal is one of the most used applications, you might want it to look pretty. I go up to settings, edit current profile, and I like to call this Mac terminal. Then I go to appearance and then click get new. And there is an a written dark for terminal and I install that. Then after installing it, I close out of this and apply the color scheme. And now what I do is go into Kate, and since the theme for Kate isn't the same as the rest of the system, I go up to Settings, Configure Kate, then go to Fonts and Colors, and then set the schema to Breeze Dark, and then the default schema for Kate I set to Breeze Dark, and then click Use KDE Color Scheme, then click Apply. There we go. Then I go to LibreOffice Writer, then go to Tools, Options, View, and then I change Icon Style to Breeze Dark then click apply and okay. And then this makes the icon stand out. And there we go. Now our KDE desktop is complete. And this cursor will fix itself with a reboot, but anyway, we're done. And that is how I customize my KDE desktop on Kubuntu. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.